Hey everyone, Mike here and this is our detailed review for the HTC One. The One is meant to bring HTC back to their former glory and that's why the Taiwanese company put a lot of effort in creating their new flagship. The result is, as you'll see from this video, better than anything they ever created before and probably the best Android handset of the moment. It's not perfect though, but stick with me and you'll see exactly what I mean by that. We'll start with the aesthetics. Metal, glass and some plastic are molded together into a body that looks and feels astonishing. The non-removable rear plate is made from aluminum, available in either silver, as our unit here, or black. Two white plastic straps perfectly integrate with the metallic back, hiding the antennas for wireless, cellular and GPS. In fact, the same ceramic coated polycarbonate is used for the edges of the phone as well, which are not straight or rounded, but rather chamfered, which does add to the unique style of the one. On the front face you get the Gorilla Glass covered screen and two extra pieces of aluminum flanking it. What's more important than the premium material used for this casing is how the phone actually feels. The HTC One is not very thin or very light, measuring 9mm in its thickest point and weighing 143 grams. But the edges are actually only 4mm thick, as the back is thicker in its middle and tapers towards the sides, thus the one kind of molds into your palm and actually feels thinner than it is. As a result, the phone sits comfortably into your hand, although it's still large and difficult to use single-handedly unless you really have big palms. So all in all, the HTC One is definitely different than the other top-of-the-line smartphones of the moment, in a good way. And while for now I can only say that the device is rock solid, I do have the feeling that this one is going to be very reliable as well. Time will tell. Anyway, let's have a quick look around this device. On the back you'll notice a Beats Audio logo, one of the noise-cancelling mics, and the rear camera with flash, which is no longer elevated and exposed like on the One X, it perfectly integrates within the aluminum body. On the top edge there's the power button, which also doubles as an IR blaster, and the 3.5mm audio jack. On the bottom sits the micro USB connector that also acts as HDMI video output, and next to it there's a microphone pin. On the left edge there's the micro SIM tray, while on the right there's a volume rocker, and that's about it. No dedicated camera button, no micro SD card slot. On top of that, the power button placement makes it difficult to press during everyday use. Plus, both this button and the volume rocker sit flush with the edges of the phone and I wish they were somehow tactile emphasized, thus easier to find with your fingers. Now onto that front face. The 4.7 inch screen is the star of the show. It's a 1080p Super LCD 3 panel and it's smaller than the 5 inches offered by the Sony Xperia Z or the Samsung Galaxy S4, which leads to a high 461 ppi density. And this one is clearly visible when displaying texts or any elements with fine details on the screen, although the difference between this particular display and any other with 400 plus ppi density is impossible to spot in real life use. The overall screen quality is top notch too. You'll have no reasons to complain about the colors, the contrast or the viewing angles. The protective glass on top of the screen is laminated, bringing the content closer to the surface, thus the only thing you might not like about the screen is its bright light visibility, which is alright, but not excellent. Two punctured metallic grills are flanking the display, each hiding a speaker, called boom sound speakers. Paired with the Beats audio software, they are definitely loud and surprisingly, the sound coming out of them is very good too, quite accurate and with no distortions. I made a clip just about the audio quality on the HTC One, so you might want to pause this review and check it out for more details. Also, make sure to tell me what do you think about these speakers in the comments below. On top of the screen there's also the front facing camera with a 2.1 megapixel sensor and a wide lens, capable of shooting 1080p videos and even HDRs. Some sensors sit on the other side of the speaker and there's also a tiny but fairly bright notification LED concealed within the upper grille. Under the screen there's the HTC logo sitting in the middle flanked by two capacitive buttons. Having the logo in the middle which is not a button is quite annoying. You'll need some time to get used to the home button on the right and because of that logo there was no room for a dedicated multitasking or menu button. As a result, tapping the home button twice will get you to the multitasking panel while holding it will launch Google Now. As for the menu, it's represented as a large black bar with three dots in most applications, which eats up a significant area of the screen for no good reason. It also looks like you could long press the back button to access the menu, but I for one couldn't find the option to activate this one on my unit. With those apart, let's see how this HTC One is actually performing during everyday use. 
It's been my main performer for the last week or so and I was satisfied with the overall experience although there are still some things I wish HTC would have done better. First, the one is running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, so not the latest Android 4.2, but that's not really a big deal. The big deal is the Sense interface. There's a new HTC Sense 5 UI on the one, designated for its 1080p resolution, and it is actually lighter and less confusing than Sense 4. And that's the good part. HTC added a new lock screen that allows you to quickly launch apps or access the notification panel. The app drawer has been revamped and you can sort the apps in several different ways. By default you'll only get 3 apps per row, but you can tweak that from the settings. What you can't however is get rid of the weather widget on top of the app drawer and I see absolutely no reason for it to be there. The home screens can be easily customized and you get a set of nice looking HTC widgets. However, you can only have up to 5 home screens and not more. Also, I couldn't find a solution to change the apps attached to the dog bar, so if there is one, please let me know in the comments. Right now, when trying to remove one of the apps from the dock, it creates a copy of it on the home screen, but does not remove it. Weird. Anyway, we should also talk about Blinkfeed, which is the new default home screen for HTC Sense 5.2. This one displays the latest news and your latest Twitter, Facebook or other social signals in a flipboard-like layout. The good part is that you can easily scroll through all these messages and quickly read what you're interested in. The bad news is that there are very few options to customize Blinkfeed. You can only choose between a set of predefined news sources, you cannot have certain types of messages stand out from the others and so on. And then you cannot remove Blinkfeed, so out of the 5 home screens, one is always going to be occupied by it. But you can set the main home screen to another one and push Blinkfeed towards the side, and that's actually what I did on my HTC One. There are some other things I should mention. The email client is very good and it offers plenty of options and an unified inbox. The notification system is alright too, but I wish HTC would have integrated some quick toggles with it, like Samsung does on their devices. And you do get some decent software installed with this machine, like the car app, the kids mode or the TV mode that lets you use the HTC One as a remote for your various electronics around the house. And then the HTC One excels as a multimedia companion. Watching movies on the 4.7 inch Full HD screen is a delight and the phone can handle all sorts of 1080p content including NKVs with subtitles and all the needed goodies. Listening to music is also a pleasure like you've seen before and even better with a pair of proper headsets. Browsing on the one is a smooth experience and this handset comes with both Chrome and a native HTC browser which still offers support for Flash. And you can also run the latest games at ease on the One, as you can see here, but if you want to see some other games I've tried on the HTC One, I'll have a clip just about that in the near future, so make sure to subscribe to my channel. So all in all, the HTC One is a beast and flies through all of your daily applications. And that's mainly because it packs fast hardware. I tested the international version, the one powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 quad-core processor with 2GB of RAM. You also get 32 or 64 GB of storage with this unit, but no microSD card. Now, I'm not going to focus on the benchmark results in this clip because I believe a phone should not be judged by just numbers. But the HTC One is very fast, in fact the fastest out there in many cases, so if you're looking for those speed tests, you'll find them in my other clip linked here. We shall however talk a bit about the camera, but once again I'll keep it short as I will have a clip just about that coming soon. The HTC One packs a 4 ultra pixel camera. Ultra pixels are actually megapixels, but on this handset the actual pixels on the sensor are larger than what you get on other phones. That, the f2.0 lens and the optical image stabilization should mean that the HTC One will offer less noisy captures and better low light performances. And it actually manages to do that as you can see from the next part of this video, but on the other hand, fair light shots are not that good. Ok, so what do you think? Make sure to leave your answers below in the comment section. Once again, more samples and conclusions are available in my other clip, so you should definitely have a look at it. All in all though, I can say that the HTC One offers a very good shooter if what you're looking for are smaller sized pictures for web, Instagram, Facebook and so on. Otherwise, if you want larger photos that you can use for prints or that you can edit and crop later, the One is not going to be your ideal pick because of the poorer resolution and rather low amount of fine details captured in Fairlight stills. And then you do get plenty of shooting options and some nice software additions, like Zoe, but more about this in that dedicated clip I was talking about. Alright, as we draw closer to the end of this clip, there are still a few things to clarify. First, I should tell you that the call quality and the signal strength are really good on the HTC One, 
even in noisy conditions, both when using the loudspeakers or the earpiece. The person at the other end of the line had no problems hearing me loud and clear either. Then the one is a top-notch pick when it comes to connectivity options. 4G LTE models will be available worldwide, also bundling Bluetooth, NFC, DLNA and wireless with support for the latest Wi-Fi AC standard that should make this handset more future-proof for the next years or so. And then there's the battery life. A 2300 mAh battery lies inside the one, the non-removable kind with average use including browsing for an hour or two, listening to some music, maybe watching some videos and playing games, plus talking for 30 minutes or more, the one was able to last from 9am till 12pm with something to spare. All this with the screen set on auto brightness. With lighter use it could probably go till the end of the second day but I wouldn't rely on that. So bottom point the HTC One is usually able to last through the day with medium use and that's enough for me. Alright so time to wrap this up. As you've seen there are plenty of things why I like the HTC One. The things that really matter for me in a phone are the snappiness, the screen, the battery life and the build quality. And the One does score high with mostly all of these. I've left the camera out as I don't really take pictures with my phone and with the HTC One the camera is actually a toss up, good for some things, rather shabby for others. And then comes HTC Sense 5, improved and lighter but still somewhat annoying at least once you get used to the different than stock Android experience. So like I said, the HTC One is not perfect, but I do believe it comes pretty close to being the best flagship of the moment, even when facing competition like the Samsung Galaxy S4 or the Sony Xperia Z. Price-wise, it's going to be competitive too, so in the end it's up to you to balance the rights and wrongs and pick the handset most suitable for your needs and taste. I for one will have some other videos comparing the HTC One with its main rivals, so if you enjoyed this review you might want to subscribe for those as well. Also, make sure to press that thumbs up button if you liked it and I'd really appreciate if you could share it on Twitter, Facebook and all the other social services so your friends will see it too. Catch you later!